So here I've got a customer asking will the CRP129 EVO do a Discovery Sport. So I don't have a Discovery Sport here but I've got two other models of Land Rover which is a Freelander. Uh, Freelander 2 2012 and I've also got a Land Rover Discovery 5 3.0 litre. Uh, we'll plug it into both of these cars and we'll see how it can handle the DPF adaptions. Okay here we've got a 2012 Land Rover Freelander 2. So you can see here it's a 2012 2.2 diesel. Okay, so it's finished doing a quick scan there. No faults within the engine. So we're just gonna go back and we're gonna enter the engine control module. Go to data stream. And we're gonna find the differential DPF. Uh, we're gonna find the DPF live data here. So not the differential pressure. Well, we can look at that as well, but what we want to do is look at the soot content. Just find anything that's related to the DPF. Okay, so I'm looking at the live data here for the DPF. We can see a little bit of discrepancy there with the differential pressure because the engine is off. And we have 1000 there at that. We also have 15 grams of soot within the DPF and the last time the distance since the particle filter had a regeneration was 950 kilometers ago so we're gonna see if we can get this reset here so if we tell it it's had a new DPF this should reset to zero and what we might need to do to correct this is do some adaptions on the particle filter differential pressure sensor so this tool is a little bit different to my more expensive tab tray unit because we can't do the adaptions from the control unit here. We need to come back, exit the diagnostic scans and go to resets. And we're going to look for DPF resets on this one. So it's just giving you a little information message there. I'm going to find Land Rover. So we're going to do a particle filter replacement, which is going to reset the grams of soot that is calculated within the DPF. Okay. Now switch the ignition off. Switch the ignition back on. That's complete. Now we want to try and calibrate that differential pressure sensor. So we're going to switch the ignition back on, go to the pressure sensor. Now that's complete as well. Okay, now we're back in the live data. We can see that the grams of soot have been reset. Distance since the last regeneration is now reset to zero kilometers. We still have the 1000 setting there on the differential pressure. We'll start up the vehicle and hold up the revs and see if this sensor is working. Okay, so we can see the sensor is working on the live data and this vehicle seems to be running perfectly fine for the last however long I've owned it but um, yeah so I'm not going to be too concerned about the pressure sensor but you can see there it is able to reset the DPF it is able to scan the codes clear the codes read your live data and that is the Freelander okay now we'll try it on something a little bit more up to date this is the Land Rover Discovery 5 okay so let's go in now this Discovery has just had a re battery replacement a couple of days ago so I am expecting to see maybe some voltage codes here chucked up. Okay so yeah just like I expected we got all sorts of 
different sensor faults here that, that come up. So first we're going to clear these fault codes. Okay, so now I've cleared all of those codes. We just had a little bit of trouble with my internet connection, so I've had to move the uh, move the, the vehicle so I can get a better signal. And we have that now done. So let's press back. Sorry, not back. We don't want to. We want to go into the engine system. Okay, so we need to go into the ECM read default code p2bae never mind that one i'm going to go to data stream now what i can see on this comparing to the freelander is we have 823 different modules here to go through okay so we've got some of the live data up here for this we can't seem to find as much as what i'd like to but there is a lot of stuff to go through i, might, I may have missed some of the more important stuff but we've got the DPF pressure here if we accelerate the vehicle up again we can see that raises up average distance between regens 237 and the soot load is 14 percent so again I'm gonna go to resets do DPF regen This is this is not for an actual region, it just gives you obviously different options what you want to do with your DPF in here. I'm gonna look for Land Rover again. Automatic search. So here's the options we have now for this vehicle is particle filter pressure sensor, differential pressure sensor replacement, you can do a region or particle filter replacement scr monitoring scr catalyst reduction start inhibit so if you've got a vehicle that won't start because of the adblue error and for the p2bae code that we have we can reset the quality monitor that will reset that fault code but for now what we'll do is particle filter replacement now only do this if it's safe to do so so you need to have very very low dpf pressure before you can do this reset if you've got a block dpf and you do this reset uh you can cause some damage to your dpf so just be careful when you're doing this so that now says it is successful we'll turn the ignition back on and we'll also do the catalyst quality reduction monitor again off and on with the ignition that's successful too okay so now we're back in we're gonna see if we can now clear that this fault code here you can see we tried to clear that before and it did not clear so we'll try that again and we'll just go into the engine control module to confirm it's gone or not no it's not okay we'll need to look into that a little bit further but for now the next thing we want to look at is the data stream and we're just going to find some of the items that we need to check off again so there we can see now we've reset these items to zero percent and the distance between the regenerations is now at zero because it hasn't driven anywhere since the reset so like I said, I have done Land Rover Discovery Sports in the past with this. I just haven't got one right here, right now. Now what I can say is this is not an Amazon tool. If you want to buy this, you have to go to Launch UK. And it is the Sea Reader 129 Evo. So that is launchtech.co.uk there. And you can see they call it the CRP 129 Evo, Evo, which is basically short for Sea Reader Professional. Uh that is the unit there and that is the cost now if we exit this diagnostic from this vehicle you can see there i need seven upgrades which is basically an update and what i can say is with this tool very very handy for diy persons in 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 particular because it doesn't come you don't have to pay any update fees so for the lifetime you own this this tool you can update it free of charge 
will update that. So you can see there with your updates, you should have compatibility with new cars up to 2023. I've used this on 2022 models. I think it's the newest I've ever done it on, and it works absolutely fine. And it should be pretty future-proof with the updates. So like I said, I have done plenty of videos using this tool before, but I, I do get a lot of questions on it because obviously it's it's a lot of people want to buy this tool just because how cheap it is in comparison to something like the Eurotab 3, which I use, which is over six grand. Uh, this for 300 quid, you know, for, for what most people want to do, it can do it. So for now, I think I'll finish up the video and I'll see you on one of the next ones.